we are told, dramatic news overnight, that there may be some form of life on Venus. Yeah. Uh, astronomers, considering that living organisms mm. may be floating around in the clouds of planet Venus. And we're going to be joined now by somebody who's an expert in this. Dr. Uh, Sheila, Dr. Sheila Kanani. Kanani, who's a planetary scientist for the Royal Astronomical Society. Uh, well, good morning to you, Dr. Kanani. Good morning. This, on the face of it, sounds extremely exciting news. Is there, for, is there life on Venus? Well, we can't definitively say that there's life on Venus at the moment, but whatever is going on at Venus is very exciting indeed. OK, what, what are we... What's, what's creating this excitement? So astronomers, and it was an international team of very diverse scientists, have found a chemical called phosphine at Venus. And on Earth, we know that phosphine can only be created in two ways, industrially by humans, or biologically, for example, by mi microbial life, living in the guts of larger creatures or living in landfills or living in quite harsh environments. Now, astronomers has, have found phosphine in the clouds of Venus, and that's really, really exciting because the mechanisms for producing phosphine on Venus really at the moment can only point towards microbial life living in the clouds of Venus. So basically we haven't found life on Venus, but what we have found is a byproduct of life. And so it, exactly. scientists are making an assumption that there must be life there, otherwise there wouldn't be the phosphine there. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. So we wouldn't make these kinds of assumptions if we hadn't done lots of tests. And over the last two years, this international team of scientists have looked at all the chemical processes that could possibly cause the phosphine at Venus. And Venus is quite a harsh place, even in the clouds where it's a bit more temperate, it's about 50 degrees centigrade, and the pressure is similar to the surface of Earth. The clouds are still highly acidic. Yeah. So anything that could be creating the phosphine there has to be able to withhold those kinds of really harsh environments. OK, so, the these, so these aren't just aliens. They are tough, <laughs> resilient, acidic, resi resistant aliens. I mean, this sounds quite alarming if we ever, you know, came into confrontation with them. Well, when we talk about aliens, what we're really thinking about is microbial life, bacteria. And on Earth, we know about bacteria called extremophiles that can live in these very harsh environments. For example, in hold, uh, uh, hydrosulfuric vents or up in the clouds above the Caribbean, and, which actually sounds quite nice. Um, <laughs> and we therefore can kind of hypothesize if this microbial life can survive these oxygen starved environments on the Earth, then maybe they can also survive in the clouds of Venus. Do you know, the only person who's probably as excited as you about all this is Laura Tobin. <laughs> you even sound like Laura Tobin. <laughs> she talks amazing. in this kind of <laughs> geeky way about all this stuff. Uh, Laura, you should talk directly, I think. But it, doctor, is, but because it you is two, so exciting. Because you two are on the same wavelength. <laughs> but it is so <laughs> exciting, and I think it's really exciting that the scientists waited for such a long time to release all this information because they wanted to be so sure about everything that they're checking, and they're hoping for international collaboration to find out more, aren't they? Yeah, they're doing loads more tests, and obviously some of the testing has been... Um, has been postponed because of the pandemic, um, but loads more tests will happen. And they're not, the scientists are not claiming to have found life on Venus at all. And they are very aware that they need to do a lot mm. more tests from the Earth. The ideal situation would be to send a spacecraft to Venus and actually taste the atmosphere and see if there is, if it is teeming with bacterial life or not. Would you like to go if there's, you know, if they put you on the flight? Uh, no, it's a very, very harsh environment. It'd be an unmanned <laughs> spacecraft, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it? It would be OK in some certain types of spacecraft, but probably more suited to robots than humans at the moment. Isn't Venus known as Earth's evil twin? Because it's pretty much the same size, but the atmosphere is so hostile. Yeah, so Venus is about the same size as the Earth, but on the surface, the temperature is about 400 degrees C and the pressure is 90 times the pressure on the surface of the Earth. So if a human being landed on the surface of Venus without any protective um, equipment, then they would be crushed Freak. because of the pressure. <laughs> and the atmosphere is highly acidic as well. It's about 90% acid, so that would burn your lungs. So it's really not a nice place at all. Maybe we should send Donald Trump, given he's so convinced everything's going to be <laughs> oh, yeah. cooling down. And the scientists Maybe don't know send, anything. Send so... the president on the first trip to Venus to 
single-handedly <laughs> cool everything. He could um... withstand that pressure. <laughs> uh, Dr Ganani, it's, it's lovely to talk to you. And, um, I mean, are there, you know, I make a joke about these aliens being resistant and, and you wouldn't want to come across them. I know they, at the moment, they're just an assumption and they could be just bacteria. But is there any concern among scientists about life elsewhere? In terms of sort of life oh, in terms coming... of a risk or threat to our planet, it's more the other way round. Actually, if we if we do believe that there is life within our solar system or elsewhere, we're more concerned about um, protecting that, those life forms. And there is something called the Planetary Protection Act, which does protect um, the potential life on other places. So when we do visit other places, for example, Saturn, Jupiter moons, etc. We are very careful as to what we send there and what we leave behind. How very politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> that never mind the risk that, that those uh, bacteria might pose to us. Very, <laughs> to very sure good stuff, them. though, uh, Doctor. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Good to talk to you, Dr Sheila Kanani. Wow. Interesting, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. And, and we've talked about life on Mars, of course, and uh, actually it was Venus all along. Yeah. Something in that.